show it's July and it feels like it <laughs> and this month for our 2020 patchwork calendar blanket we are going to make the super classic pinwheel square the pinwheel and the nine patch are in fact the two patterns that I first think of when someone says patchwork quilt and since July makes me think of summer holidays and those little pinwheels that some of us used to play with when we were younger, you might even still see them sort of plunked in people's gardens, we thought this was the perfect month to bring you this classic piece. I'm going to demonstrate the two color classic pinwheel, but of course you know by this point that you can really change the look of a pattern by changing the colors. So, I went ahead and I made another one that uses four colors plus the regular border color, and I really like how this one looks too. And Mr. and Stitches is going to plunk a couple of graphs in here so that you can get an idea for some other color inspirations if you're trying to figure out what to do with your scraps. It's the same weight and fiber yarn as we've been using all along and the same hook size. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up the pinwheel square together. There are a couple ways to make the pinwheel square. You can make it using uh, four different colors plus your border or two different colors plus your border. I'm going to be demonstrating the two color version today. Either way, you're going to need 18 yards per square. That breaks down to 18 yards per color if you're making the four color version plus an additional nine yards for your border color or 36 yards per color if you're making the two color version like I am plus eight yards for your border color. I'm using a size four medium weight acrylic yarn and I'm demonstrating the two color version today. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is the same one, a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. As always, you might find it helpful to draw and color in a little graph for yourself to follow. The four color version looks a little different than the two color version, but follows the same drawing. Make yourself a square, Draw a line to bisect it from top to bottom, and another line to bisect it from side to side. Then draw a line from one corner to the opposite, and another line from the other corner to the opposite. Then you can color in the triangles as you see fit. We're going to make four identical squares to begin with, and then crochet them together afterwards into one big square. So a slightly different construction than normal, but same overall 12 inch square effect. You can start with either color, it doesn't matter because ultimately your little square will be perfectly balanced between the two, so it doesn't matter which color you start with. And it doesn't matter which color you start with as you make your squares, so if you forget that you started with, say, blue, and you start with pink the next time, it's okay, your square is still going to turn out exactly the same. We're going to create the square using a lot of the same techniques we used when we made the uh, hourglass square, but this is a lot simpler because it's only two colors to contend with, not four, and it's also a much smaller square. The counts are a little different, though, so what we're going to take you through that one row at a time, and then you're going to make four squares absolutely identical. Grab one of the colors that you're going to be using in your square and make a slip knot. We're going to chain four to begin. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first chain we made to make a ring. So we're starting in a ring. So there's your little ring there. If you're new to working out of a small ring, you might want to put a little stitch marker through it so that you can always identify where the ring is. We're going to begin by chaining three. The chain three at the beginning of each row counts as a double crochet. And we're going to double crochet three more times into that little ring. So 
So including your chain three, you'll have four double crochets. Chain one, we are only using a chain one for the corners in this little square because we want to keep our corners nice and small and tight. Into that ring, we're going to double crochet four more stitches. You should have four double crochet, one of those is a chain three, a chain one for a corner, and four more double crochet. We're going to chain one for a corner now, and we're going to add in our second color. So you can grab your second color, and make a slip knot, place that on your hook, not too tight, not too loose, and now this slip knot counts as the yarn over for the first half of our new double crochet. So into that ring you're now going to double crochet, so pick up a loop, so you can see where your, slip, your new slip knot counts as that yarn over. You're going to continue and finish that first double crochet. Don't worry about this giant pull on that loop, we'll come back to that in a moment. You're going to continue now with the rest of row one, you're going to double crochet three more times into that ring. And you can work over top of your short tails or you can leave them out to the back and weave them in later. There we go. Chain one for a corner and you're going to work the last four double crochets of row one into that ring and if it helps you can pull back on those stitches just to give yourself a little more ring to work into. I'm just going to put my little ties to the back now. Alright, there's four double crochet in the new color, a chain one, four more double crochet in the new color. We're going to chain one for the last corner and then over here we're going to find the top of the chain three that began the row. That's the first color we started with. Slip stitch to join. There we go. Now back here where your blue color is sort of, or your first color is hanging, you can just tie, tug on that. Make those corners as small and as tight as you can. It's pretty obvious where the space is between those two colors, so you don't have to worry about making that almost almost invisible, that little chain one, because you can still see where the, the, the space is. It's obviously between where the two colors meet. And already we have a nice little perfect slice, a half and half colored square. So that's row one. You're going to continue with the color you're already using because this is sort of an easy way to know where you are. Whatever color is right where you are is the color you need to continue with. At the end of a row, all we're going to do is turn. We are not chaining. You are just going to find that space between the stitches and you're going to slip stitch into it. So just turn, do not chain one, slip stitch into that space between the two sort of four double crochet shells and now we can begin row two. Each row begins with a chain three. That chain three counts as a double crochet. Into the same space we're going to work another double crochet. So that's two. And now you're going to double crochet across each of those four stitches from the previous row. So if you have trouble seeing that first stitch top, you might want to pull back on the stitches that you're working in the corner. It might not be too difficult at the beginning of row two, but by the beginning of row four, you might want to make sure you're pulling back on those stitches just so you don't miss any. So that's a double crochet in the top of each double crochet across those four stitches from the previous row. That brings us up to the chain one space and into that space you're going to double crochet two times. And now you should have eight double crochet, that includes your chain three, running across that side. So four per side in row one, eight now per side in row two. Chain one. Into that same space you're going to work two more double crochet. Pull back just to make sure you're not missing that first stitch. Double crochet across those four stitches and three of them will be obvious and you're going to see this every time you come back to a color change so don't forget this one funny little trick of the eye. When you get back to the color change 
this little loop that you had to keep pulling back on is technically the top of this fourth stitch. So you've got three real stitches to work into and whenever you get back to the color change you've got to work one into that stitch top that doesn't look connected to the stitch. So don't forget it when you get back there you think oh my gosh I missed a stitch. You didn't. When you get to a color change you always have to work that stitch into the top of that chain which is technically the color change on top of that stitch. But we also find ourselves in the space and you want to work two more double crochet. So the other way you might want to look at it is every time you get back to a color change you want to work the right number of stitches into that space plus one because you don't want to miss out on one that sits at the top of that last stitch. Either way you should have eight stitches across the top of that side. Chain one and now there's our other color waiting for us. We can immediately switch to it. You can pull on it just to tighten up that corner to make it nice and small and work two double crochet into that same space don't worry about that big loop. You can always tighten it up later. Make sure you've got four, so two of the previous color, chain one, and two of the new color in that space. And now it's the same thing. You're going to double crochet in each of those four stitches from the previous row, two double crochet into the space when you get there, chain one, and two more double crochet into the same space, and then double crochet across the top of those last few stitches, so here I am back at the space, so two double crochet into it, chain one for the corner, I'm not done yet, I've got to work two more double crochet into that space, and then double crochet into each of those stitches, so there's one, two, three, oh and there's four, four is the top of the chain three, and we joined to it when we completed the last row, so don't miss it, but I'll show you what it looks like when we get over there. So there's the second last one. The top of that stitch might look a little split, so don't let it fool you. And then you're going to reach down to the top of the chain three, which has already been used, but that's okay. Just stick your hook through the same place. And you might think we're done, but we're not with this side. When you get back to um, the last bit where you changed colors, but your yarn color isn't over there, don't forget to work the last few double crochets into that space because you need it to be even. There's two double crochet of the other color in that space, and now you want to work two double crochet into that same space to finish off this side. Remember, each side of row two needs to have eight stitches in it. Chain one for the last corner and now you can join with a top, or I should say with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three from the other color and that completes row two. Eight stitches across each side and don't count the chain one spaces. For row three we are just going to turn our work, no chaining, and we're going to slip stitch directly back into that chain one space and now we're going to begin row three. Each row begins with a chain three, that counts as a double crochet. Double crochet again into the same space before you leave it. Remember to pull back, you don't want to miss the top of the next actual stitch you want to work into. And now you have eight stitches to double crochet into across those previous stitches before you get to the next chain one space where you're going to work two double crochet. At the end of the first side of row three you should have two double crochet, one of which is a chain three worked into that first space, a double crochet worked into the top of each of those eight stitches, and then two more double crochet worked into the next space, giving you a total of 12 stitches per side for row three. Chain one. Before you leave work the first two double crochet of your second side into that space, and then pull back, don't miss that first stitch, double crochet across those eight, and remember when you get back to the color change things look a little different. Alright, here I am back at the color change, there's that nice big loop reminding me that I have to work the top of this stitch is actually this loop, so 
just remember to work that last stitch that's actually into that loop even though you're already still in that corner space and then work the last two double crochet of that side into the space so you're sort of working a third one into the space or an extra one but it's technically on top of this stitch here pull that nice and tight so that you can minimize that space as much as possible drop that color here's your other color just waiting for you at the corner and now you're going to repeat the same thing all the way around so two double crochet to complete that corner double crochet across each of those eight stitches two double crochet into the corner space chain one turn two double crochet or I should say rotate don't turn <laughs> complete the corner with two double crochet double crochet into each of those eight stitches the last stitch worked across those previous ones will be right here into the top of that chain three but I'll catch up with you when we get there Right, I'm back to that other color change where the top of the chain three is where I need to work the last stitch across my pre-existing stitches so it's easy to see if you just pull it apart you can see there's the top of it right there I'm gonna work the last double crochet across those stitches into it and then my row isn't done until I've worked my last two double crochet into that chain one space each side needs to have 12 double crochet stitches in it for the end of row three chain your last one for a corner and then you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that began the row that is row three we've got one more row to do oh, look at that perfect balanced half and half square I just love how that looks it's so much fun we are going to begin row four by turning no chaining slip stitch back into that chain one space that sets you up so that now you can start working back across the same color stitches for row four. Row four is a little bit different, but just a little. We're still gonna chain three to begin, and the chain three still counts as a double crochet, but into that chain one space, we're going to work two more double crochet because we want a total of 18 stitches per side for the end of row four. And if you've been doing all these squares along with me, you know that 18 is a magic number when we've cut our block into quarters. So we want 18 stitches per side for row four. So now you can pull back on those stitches. Make sure you don't miss that first stitch. You're going to double crochet into the top of each of those 12 stitches from the row before. And I'll catch up with you at the next corner. All right, I'm working across side one of row four. I've worked the last double crochet into the top of my pre-existing stitches. That brings me up to the corner. Incidentally, that's stitch number 15 before you get to the corner. So you should have 15 stitches before you get to your second corner. And now I want to work three double crochet. So three double crochet into that corner space. And that will give me a total of 18 double crochet across that first side. So very important. You want to make sure you have 18 stitches on each side. Chain one. Before we leave, three double crochet into that corner space that sets up the beginning of side two. And like I said before earlier, when you get to row four, you might have a lot more stuff going into that corner space. So it helps us just pull back a little. And there's that first stitch. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to double crochet now across those 12 existing stitches. And don't forget when you get to the color change, what you have to do. Here I am back at the color change. That big loopy loop reminds me that, oh yeah, that's actually the top of this stitch here. So I need to work my 15th stitch into there. And now I'm technically in the corner and I can finish that side by working three more double crochet stitches. Remember, we need 18 per side. There we go. Chain one for the corner. You can now tighten up that corner with that other color. Drop that color, pick up the one that's sitting there waiting for you, and begin third side with three double crochet, all worked into that same corner space 
real estate's getting pretty crowded here. You might find your block is warping and kind of collapsing on you. As long as you're keeping your stitches nice and tight, that's exactly what's going to happen, so don't worry about it too much. Pull back, make sure you don't miss that first stitch. So there's the stitch, there's the top of it right there. There we go. Double crochet across those pre-existing 12 stitches. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet into the next corner space. Double crochet across the remaining 12 pre-existing stitches. Don't forget that the last one's going to be in the top of that chain three. But I'll catch up with you when we get there. Here we are back at the corner and I want to make sure the last stitch in the pre-existing stitches is in the top of that chain three. And then I need to work three double crochet to finish this side into this chain one space. So I'm kind of working over top of that, the bottom of that chain three that began the row. But you definitely don't want to forget those extra stitches when you get back to, or get all the way around I guess I should say. Make sure you've got 18 stitches across each side. Chain one for your last corner. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And that is it. That is how you make all four squares. All right, now we've got two colors to contend with. So we're gonna snip both of our yarns. This one's an easy, you fasten off, weave in that tail, weave in these other little tails down here. And this one up here, let's focus in on this one. First, we want to tighten up that loop so that it almost disappears. Nice, tiny little chain one space. We're gonna thread it up in our yarn needle and we're just going to create a little knot. We're going to come over top and go through the front loop of that little chain one stitch and then we're going to go through the little loop that we made and back down underneath the back loop of that same stitch and make sure you've got the back loop of that same stitch so through the loop you made, underneath the back loop of that last stitch, pull nice and tight, and you've created a decent little knot. If you are unsure of that knot, you're worried it might come out, especially if you're using slippery material, you can just create a little knot on the back here. But take the time to weave in your tails back and forth underneath the stitches of the last row of the same color, back and forth two or three times, Don't pull too tightly. You don't want to pull that little corner out of alignment. Hop over top of the last loop and back through the same stitches. A couple times, trim any excess, and it shouldn't go anywhere. You might have a gnarly looking square. Kind of looks like it's been through the ringer. <laughs> no biggie. Put your hand on it, nice and warm. Grab the little corners, pull them out, one at a time. Switch hands. Just sort of flatten it out a little bit. Stretch out the corners and the edges. And that will flatten it just enough so that you can put it together. And don't worry about it if there's still a little bit of warping because it will largely disappear once we get them all stitched together. And of course, once you get the whole thing into your blanket, if you have any square warping or wriggling <laughs> in any of your patchwork squares, you can, of course, block your blanket once it's all said and done. And that'll take care of all of that. Now you want to go ahead and make four more of these. Once you've got all four squares made, you're gonna take your handy dandy little graph and you're gonna rotate each of your squares so that it matches the graph that you made. And this might take a little twisting. It's a bit like a puzzle. <laughs> Great. And when you line them all up, sort of square them up so that their corners all match, you should definitely see that pinwheel effect going. It looks really, really cool. Now we're going to attach them by using a slip stitch crochet method. We're going to work first this set together, then this set together, and then we're going to stitch the two sets together into a square. 
let's focus on the right hand side of our block. You're going to take the color that is the top right blocks bottom half. So this color, whatever this color is on your square, you're going to grab that and that's what you're going to use to stitch these two blocks together. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Don't make it too tight or too loose and then take it off your hook. You're going to take these two squares and you're going to focus on the top right one first. Come down here, ignore the chain one space. What you want to do is find the top of that first double crochet. So here's the double crochet. That's the chain one. You're going to ignore that. You're going to grab the bottom loop of that first double crochet stitch. Make sure you haven't twisted them around. Yep. You're going to skip the chain and find the bottom. So it's the inside loops. If you sort of had them facing each other, it's the loop furthest away from the inside of your square and the loop furthest away from the inside of your square on the other side. And these two loops would sort of sit right against each other. So that loop, this loop, then grab your slip stitch or slip knot, put it back on your hook. I know it looks a bit funny right now, but don't worry. <laughs> and now you're going to pull it back up through that first loop and back up through that second loop. Try not to pull too tightly because you don't want that knot to come up through your loops. It'll get a lot easier as we go. Okay. Identify the next stitch. So I'm going to get my little things out of here. That'll be make sure I'm going the right way. There we go. That's this stitch here. So I'm going to grab the bottom or the outside facing loop of that stitch and the outside facing loop of this stitch. It's a little easier to see now. And I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to yarn over hook and slip stitch carefully back through everything to slip stitch. Okay, let's do that again. A little easier to see now. There, there's the next stitch. I'm going to grab the outside loop. There's the next stitch down here. I'm going to grab the outside loop of that. Grab my yarn. Yarn over and pull back through those loops to create a slip stitch. Let's do it again. Here's the next stitch. Grab the outside loop. There's the next stitch. Grab the outside loop. Grab my working yarn. Yarn over. Pull back through that loop, through that loop, and then through that loop. And what you've got happening is this nice little slip stitch join that's the same color as your top block and that won't give your squares too much flexibility. So it's going to keep them sort of more together and it'll look more like a solid square than it would you sort of stitching together a bunch of little squares. So that's all you're going to do all the way across. Grab the outside loop of the next stitch, the outside loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull back carefully through all those loops. Try not to let your stitches get too loose or too tight. And I'll catch up with you at the end of this side. So far that's what we've got, slip stitching those two squares together. It's very neat and tidy on the bottom, it's quite neat and tidy on the top. When you get across to the end, your last stitch, remember because there's a color change, actually has a different colored top loop. So don't be confused, grab that last one and the last stitch top there and slip stitch through everything. And you're ignoring the chain ones. We're just going to hop over those because we really want to negate them as much as possible. We want to keep this as compact a little square as we can. That's it for side one of the square. You can fasten off just like you would any other crochet project. Pull that nice and tight and take a moment to weave in those ends back and forth through some like colored stitches. That's side number one, or the right side done. 
we're going to focus on the left side now. And for consistency, because we want to use the same color that we used to stitch up these two squares, but we want the uh, loops to be on top to match, we're actually going to just flip this upside down for now. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to join our yarn, work all the way across, making sure that the pink loops are the ones we go through first and the blue loops or the second color are the ones we go through second. So I'll just start you off with that one more time. So you pick up your square, you want to skip the chain one, you want to find the top of the first real stitch, do exactly the same thing for your second square, so there's the loop, so outside loops for both of those stitches, and then grab that slip stitch, or the slip knot, Turn it into a slip stitch. Don't pull too tightly, you want to leave that little knot out the bottom. And then continue. So find the next stitch, grab the outside loop. Find the next stitch on the other square. Find the outside loop. And slip stitch. And you're going to do that all the way across, exactly like the first pair. That's the second side done, and remember you want to flip it back so that you've got your pinwheel shape back to the right, and if you're not sure, just grab your handy dandy little color chart and make sure everything matches. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to begin by slip stitching the bottom parts together. We're going to do a funky little sort of cross slip in the middle, and then we're going to start slipping the top half together, but because we want that same color and we want it to sort of stay up on top of that same color, we're going to flip from one set of loops to kind of doing it in the inverse, but don't worry, I'm going to show you what that looks like when we get there. So all you need to do is just turn it sideways and start on this side, so you're basically starting at the bottom of your square, making sure you use the inside loop of your, of this color, so whatever this color is, should be the same as this one. Um, if you're using a four color situation, you have a lot more freedom here. So you can use that color, you can stop and use a different color up top, you can sort of use whatever colors you want. Um, so it's a little bit different. You basically want it, whatever color this bottom piece is, you want to start with that particular colored uh, yarn. And you're going to do exactly the same thing. Use the inside loop and the inside loop, slip stitch, inside loop, inside loop, slip stitch, all the way up to the center, and I'll catch up with you there. So far, we're all stitched up. So we've got the last two bits to stitch together. We've arrived at the center. So we want to cross through the center, and we want to close that space in the middle. If you've got stitch markers, you might find this helpful to use them here, especially if you're having trouble kind of keeping track of where you need to make your next stitch. If you're unsure of where you should be starting your stitches, so if you're not sure which stitch to start with, go to the end. This is a great technique when you're making these squares. Go to the end, find that last stitch. It's very clear what the top of it is. There's the 18th stitch. Count back 18. Do it on the other side as well, and you can mark the 18th stitch on both sides with a stitch marker so you know exactly where you want to put your hook. We are now going to stop using the loop on the right side first. We're going to start using the loop on the left side first so that we can keep this color on top of our square. And even if you're doing the other four, corner, four colored square, it should still work out because this triangle should still be the same as that triangle. Here we go. This is a fun little cross through the center. We're going to grab a loop at the end of our stitching from one side. We're going to grab a loop, any loop, from the stitching on the bottom. So that's two loops. And now we're going to grab a loop. Now for me, that's the top of a chain three. So I actually want to use the whole space that I worked through. So I'm going to just stick my hook right through it. I'm going to come back to this in a second because this loop right here I'm going to be using. It's actually separate from that hole. So I'm using the top of the chain three and here is the 18th or the first inside loop of a stitch I need to use over there. So the opposite colored square, that loop goes on last. So you should have four loops here on your hook. 
you're going to just make sure you tug a little tighter on that loop back there because you don't want it to be big and sloppy and now you're just going to yarn over and just slowly pull back through all those loops twisting your hook wherever you need to and back through that last one nice and tight and that will make your middle nice and even and all that space will go away. It'll be a lot easier to see once we've got a few stitches away. Okay, here we go. Remember, you want the matching color to be the, 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 the yarn you're using to stitch it up. You want that loop to go on your hook first. I'm going to bring you back to this funny little spot. See how I use the top of the chain three? There's the chain three. So this is the inside loop from the next stitch that I want. And this one's a little more obvious here. That's the next stitch of the loop I want there. And it's the same thing from here on out. Now you might find working flat on a surface is a little easier for you. I'm sort of holding it up in the air so you can all see what I'm doing. There we go. Again, same colored goes on top, sort of inside loop. Inside loop of the other square. And then I yarn over. Come here, there we go. Back through that loop, back through that, that loop, and back through that loop. Okay. We are now a couple stitches away from the center. I'm just going to lay this down and I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly how this should look. So there's the two first stitches that we made, so we, when we put our first two sets of squares together, and now we're coming up. This is technically the bottom of our square, but it doesn't really matter because it's a pinwheel. And we've come up along here, we've worked our way through that open center area, and now we're working our way out the other end of the square. So now all you have to do is just continue doing that little slip stitch join, but be, make sure that the same color is going on your hook first. So the same color you're slip stitching with goes on first, that inside loop, and then the inside loop from the other square, and then you yarn over, pull it back through everything. There you go. You just take your time working away at that and I'll catch up with you at the other side. When you get all the way across to the other side, fasten off and take a moment to weave in both your ends and that's the base of our pinwheel square all finished. Now it's time to put on our border. The reason it was important to have 18 stitches across each square was so that we would have a total of 36 stitches to work across each side. If you'll remember, each of our patchwork square end up with 36 stitches along each side in a little chain two corner space, and that's so all of our squares will be easily put together at the end when we form our blanket. Now you might be asking yourself, but what about this little dip here where we've got the chain one corners? Well, don't worry. <laughs> We've got a neat little thing that we're going to do as we cross those little dips. You can sort of see it here. Without changing the stitch count, we're going to create a couple of double crochet two stitches together. So you see the stitches remain the same. So there's one stitch, but it's got two little feet. And that's what's going to create a nice, even, solid border all the way around our square. So let's start. We're going to grab our border color. We're going to make a slip knot, pick up your square. You can really start anywhere you want. Um, I'm going to start right up here. So I've got a chain three. This is so I can show you what it looks like. This is the top of a stitch. Remember the chain three. So I'm going to slip my hook right into that chain three to begin. I'm going to slip stitch to join my yarn, chain three, it counts as a double crochet. And now I'm going to double crochet into each of those remaining 17 stitches across this square. And that second one always looks a little funny, so make sure you get both loops. So we're back to using both loops across the top of each stitch. Regular old double crochet into the regular old top of a stitch. Your chain three counts as a double crochet. 
you're going to double crochet into the remaining 17 stitches across that first square and I'll catch up with you at the intersection between these first two squares. Okay, I've got my chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. I've worked 16 more double crochets, so 17 in total. Here's where I'd work double crochet number 18. If I look across to the next square, that's where I'd work the first double crochet on my next square, but that leaves quite a gap in between the two. So here's how we close that gap, and you're gonna do this on each side. As you near the finish, or the 18th stitch on the first block of each side, you're gonna start a double crochet in that 18th stitch Work the first half of it, that leaves two loops on your hook, and you're going to reach down, you're going to skip over the chain one space, there it is there, and you're going to find that first stitch past the chain one. You're going to use the whole thing. You might find it's bisected because we use slip stitch to join, but you're going to reach down and grab it, start a second double crochet in it, work the first half of it, You'll have three loops left on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything, and now we have one stitch, but it's got two legs. And that creates a nice little closure in that gap. Reach across to the second block on the side, that's where you'd work the first stitch usually, but you want to close it in, so that means we need to start it a little bit ahead of schedule. Because this is the color that was doing the slip stitching, that first stitch past the chain one space might be a bit on the thick side, so you can just use the actual chaining, slip your hook through that seam, start a double crochet stitch, just work the first half of it, reach across the chain one space to the first actual double crochet, and start a double crochet in that stitch, work the first half, and then yarn over, pull everything back through those three loops, You've now got number 18 and number 19's stitches across the side, but they each have two legs. So that closes in that little dip, and you're going to have the same thing on all four sides. And after you've sort of stretched it out a little bit, smoothed everything out, it's not going to be terribly noticeable, as you can see here. So you can go ahead Work the rest of those other 17 double crochets to finish off side one as normal, and I'll catch up with you when we get to the corner. Across side one, you've got a chain three that began, you've got two double crochet, two stitches together running across that little dip, which actually only count as two stitches, and then you should have 36 in total. So if you count them up, you should have 36 little loops running across the top of side one. That brings us up to our corner. We're going to chain two to turn the corner. And we want to identify the first stitch we want to work into. Now it looks like it might be this one, but it's sitting, it actually belongs to this stitch here. So this guy, because there was a color change, this is actually the top of that stitch, even though it looks like the corner. And if you ever get to this point and you're not quite sure, find the obvious stitch at the end of the first block, count back 18, and if this is number 17, that means that's number 18. So you chain two for the corner, you're actually going to work the first stitch underneath that little color change loop, and then you'll have 17 more stitches across that first block. You're going to work the first 17 stitches across the first block, and then don't forget to make your double crochet two stitches together across the seam. I'll show you that once more when I get there. I've worked 17 stitches across the first block on side two. I'm at my 18th stitch. I want to create that filler stitch. So I'm going to start a double crochet in the 18th stitch, work the first half of it, and start another double crochet by creating one below that. I don't want to use the chain one space. I want to find something along the seam that creates a nice sturdy stitch that's solid. Same thing on the other side, this is where I would start, nope, that's not it, this is it here. That's my first stitch, that's where I would work, but I need to start it a little bit before that, so I'm actually going to reach in through the seam, I don't want to use the chain one space, start a double crochet, and then skip the chain one space, make sure I'm using the top of the next actual double crochet, and complete that stitch. 
it looks a little bit like a dip at the beginning but it is going to even up after we do a little bit of blocking and again those are just two stitches even though they each have two legs finish the rest of those 17 double crochet as normal chain two to turn your corner and do the whole thing all over again twice more and then we'll be done our border once you've worked the last stitch of your last side chain two for your final corner and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that began the whole row now you can snip your yarn fasten off weave in that tail and any other tails that you may have sort of neglected as you worked on it and you can pull out the corners pull out the middles so that your seams sort of even up just keep the heat of your hand on it and here we are in July so that's not too difficult <laughs> pull out all four corners flatten it down don't worry about blocking your square just yet you want to make sure most importantly that you've got the right number of stitches running along each side because that is how we're going to connect our squares together when it comes time to join them all up and there we go Ugh, a pinwheel I feel like putting it in the garden on a stick and watching it blow in the wind and there you have it the pinwheel square it's a classic patchwork look and of course depending on the colors you choose you can change up the pattern <laughs> We hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.